and then serve God is anything we do to glorify God. Any real Christian would tell people about Jesus. We live out this Christian life. Okay, now, so we look at these points. First, to repent of our sins and turn away from sins. John 5, 14, stop. Uh, Jesus says, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So sins can open the way to different problems and worse things can happen to people. So we need to understand that what Jesus said here, that when, we, when he said to the man who was healed of 38 years of sickness, he said, sin no more, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So if he continues sin, his sickness may come back. Satan can attack him. He will have problems in his family and his life and God is not pleased with him. So all kinds of problems. And if the person continues sin without repentance, he could lose salvation. Okay, and then Galatians 6, 8. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction, but he who sows to the f Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So when we sow to the flesh, flesh is the sinful nature. So we follow the flesh, the sinful nature will from the sinful nature reap destruction. So continuous sin will reap destruction of the whole life. The whole life will be destroyed. The family will be destroyed, the spiritual life will be destroyed, the joy will be destroyed, and the church will be destroyed if he's a minister, and his family will be destroyed, everything will be destroyed. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. He will have everlasting life if we follow the Holy Spirit. So when people sow to the flesh, destruction can come to him, and obedience to the Holy Spirit will bring eternal life. And then Ephesians 4.26, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So here it says, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So do not let your anger stay. And then he said, Do not give the devil a foothold. So he's talking about not to anger, not to sin in your anger. And then he says, Don't give the devil a foothold. So he's saying, Paul is saying that, when we continue sin, then we are giving the devil a foothold. That uh, sinning will give the devil a foothold. Okay, so verse 26. So this is how we interpret the Bible. We look at the context. What's before and what's after. Verse 26 talk about not to sin in our anger. Verse 27 talk about not giving the devil a foothold. So sinning is one way to give the devil a foothold. John 10.10 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So the thief will come to kill, to steal, to kill and destroy. Now there are thieves on earth, but the greatest thief is Satan. The greatest thief is Satan, is the devil. Giving a foothold to the devil will let him come to steal, kill and destroy. He will steal everything. He will kill the life and give, bring etern eternal death and destroy the whole life. Okay, and then continue to repent of our sins and turn away from sin. So this the fifth Bible verse. Now I hope you all uh, remember this Bible verses and then you can teach our people to understand that sins are very destructive. Now many people preach but they don't tell them, teach them the truth to understand sins are very destructive. Galatians 5.19 because some people say, I just repent and then God will forgive me and everything's over. It's not over. For instance, someone has committed adultery and he asks God to forgive him. God will forgive him. But he will destroy his family. His wife will be very angry with him. He will have problems. He has a problem in his family. So there will be continual problem. There will be destruction from his sin. So we, not, we, we don't just repent, but we also turn away from the sin, ask God to forgive us and turn away from the sin. Galatians 5.19, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, envies, and the like, of which I tell you, Beforehand, just as I have, I also t told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So here is talk about sins that people might commit. You know, that is, 
Some Christians commit these sins. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, hatred, wrath, anger, selfish ambitions, envy. So there are people who do this. And so can they inherit the kingdom of God. If they repent of the sin, then they can inherit the kingdom of God. But after we repent, we want to obey God. We don't just repent and then we continue to sin. We repent and turn away from the sins. Some Christians sometimes commit these sins. If they don't repent, they can lose salvation. If they, we truly repent, God will forgive us. So this is a warning. If we continue to sin, it can bring eternal damnation. It's very real. And if a person doesn't feel remorse and the fear of the Lord that he continues to sin and doesn't take it seriously, he can lose salvation. Okay, and then continue trusting Jesus as Savior and Master. We have looked at this verse before, but it says, Many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God and to those who believe in His name. So we continue to trust in Jesus, continue to receive Him. Let Him be our Lord, our Master. That we let Him take over our whole house. There was a story that someone invites Jesus in the house and give Jesus a guest room just one guest room that's not taking over his life and then he say okay i let you take over all the rooms except my room they're still not letting jesus take over his whole life but he say says to jesus take over my whole life all the rooms in the house then jesus can bless the whole house the whole person so we want to let receive jesus now believing in jesus name is not just a head knowledge it's not just a head activity it involves receiving Jesus in our lives as Savior and Master of our life. So He's our Savior and our Master. Receiving Jesus as the Master of our life means letting Him to take control of our lives. Let Him control our lives. Uh, let Him guide our lives. Then God will give us the right to become the children of God. Okay, now the next point, the third fruit of salvation. Have a close relationship with God. John 15:5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. So these verses say, says that Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches. And then when we abide in him, like the branches have to stay in the tree, when we abide in Him, have a close relationship with Him, and He in us, then we'll bear much fruit. Because where Jesus is, there is fruit, there is peace and joy and love and kindness and goodness. And then we want to bless people. We care about people. We want people safe. So when people have Jesus abiding in Him, in Him will bear fruit, will change. The whole life will change. That's the reason why we need to have a close relationship with God. Let Jesus take over our life all day long. All day long we praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are so wonderful. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for giving me joy and love and peace and kindness. And the more we praise God and love God and repent of our sins, the more we'll bear fruit and we'll start to, to bear fruit. That naturally, when we have a close relationship with God, naturally we want to do good. We want to serve God. But some Christians don't have this motivation because they don't have this close relationship with God. They don't pray at home. They don't read the Bible. Then they are not changed by God. We need to pray to let God work in our life. Then our life will be changed and magnified God. And then if anyone does not abide in Jesus, then he is cast out as a branch. So if he doesn't stay in Jesus, it will, the branch will dry up. He will have no spiritual life. The branch will dry up. And then uh, will wither it will dry up and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned so this is hell so if the, a person doesn't have close relationship with god at all then he's not safe now i have preached in a church and i asked them how many of you pray at home not too many people raise their hand this church the people don't even answer this question do you pray at home so I tell them, pray at home, have this relationship with God. If not, you 
might not have eternal life. There are people who don't pray at home at all. They don't have a relationship with God. And the relationship with God is mutual. It's not just talking to God. It's letting God talk to us. But because God talks to us and tells us to repent of this sin, when we yell at people, God will talk to us. Now every Christian will hear this voice of God. Every Christian, when they yell at people, or when they steal money, or when they commit adultery, or when they have, when they have lust, they will feel bad in their heart when they are born again. They feel sorry for their sins, and they, they ask God to forgive them. So we need to repent of our sin, and then God will uh, change our life, and then we have this life in us, and then we want to change, and then we want to continue to respond to God. So it's a two-way communication. Then we love Him and obey Him. We have a close relationship with Him. He will keep talking to us. He will guide us through the Bible. He will guide us to repent and guide us to obey Him. Then there is a mutual relationship with God. Okay, and love God with all our heart. Mark 12, 12 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind and, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. So this is the most important commandment to love God. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of love. God loves us very much. He even sent His Son to die for us. And He works in our heart all day long. All the time He works in our heart to change our lives. So God is a loving God. God is a God of love. And in the kingdom of God, He wants everyone to live in love. When people live in hatred and indifference, they don't care about people, then what happens is they... They, they're not showing the love of God. They're not manifesting the, the kingdom of God, the love of God. The kingdom of God is full of love of God. So when we have this God who loves us so much, He blesses us in so many ways. He gives us life. He gives us food. He gave us His nature. He gives us eternal life by uh, sending Jesus to die for our sins. He, uh, and the Holy Spirit continues to move in our heart to guide us, to obey Him. And He gives us spiritual gift and give us provision, open a way to bless us. So He has blessed us in so many, so many ways. So we want to thank Him. There is no one like Jesus. No one in the whole world like Jesus. He has blessed us so many ways. So we want to respond by loving Jesus, by loving God. So that's a natural response. If someone has blessed us so many ways, do we want to really say thanks and really respond with love? And God wants us to respond in love. That when we have this mutual love, then we are in the kingdom of God. When we love God, when we have this living relationship with God, naturally we want to love God. Then we have a living relationship. It's not just believe in the head. It's a lo loving relationship. So God is full of love. His kingdom is a kingdom of love. The kingdom is held together by love. He loves us very much. He wants us to love Him above all things. When we love Him, our hearts will also be open to God and God will bless us greatly. Many Christians just want to get things from God instead of loving God. So when they just want to get things, they don't get things. But if they really love God, they get more because God will prepare for them things they have, can never imagine. Okay, and then 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. O Lord, come. Now this verse says very clearly, if someone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be a curse. Any real Christian will have love for God and Jesus Christ. And if he doesn't love Jesus at all, his life has some problem. We are not saved by loving God. We are saved by grace through faith that when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. But when we are saved, we naturally want to love God and love people. Uh, so if the person doesn't have love for God at all, that means he's, he has no spiritual life. His life is dead. His spiritual life is dead. So saving faith in God will always produce fruit. The most important fruit is to love God and, and who loves us so much. If anyone does not love God, there is something wrong with his faith. If his faith is dead, he is not safe and he will be accursed. So we understand if a person doesn't love God, he is cursed by God. He will go to hell. Okay, now the fifth point, obe obeying God, especially the Great Commission. Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does his will, does the will of my Father in heaven. 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your names? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So here it says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, some people say, Lord, 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 but they don't obey God. So these people who say, Lord, Lord, sh they will not, not everyone will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So only he who obeys God. And many will say on that day, the judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? They even prophesied and cast out demons and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So what does it mean that these people have done this ministry and then they don't obey God? It means they don't obey God in their inner life. It's just ex external. Some people would... Pro you know, lead the worship team, they will dance in the church, they will preach sermons, they will do things in the church, but they don't have a living relationship with God. And if they don't have a living relationship with God, then they don't bear the fruit of obeying God. Now, obeying God is not just doing good things in the world. Now, it includes doing good things in the world, but it includes obeying what God tells us to love God and to love people, to care about people and want to tell them about Jesus, to glorify God. So it includes glorifying God. If someone just, just you know, he, he just uh, do good things to people but never show the life of Jesus, he's not, he's not doing the good works God wants him to do. The good works want him, people to do is to glorify God. Whatever we do to people, we glorify God and tell them that it's God who motivates us to bless you, to help you. It's God who changes me. So that is glorifying God. So, and telling people about Jesus' salvation. Okay, now, so if people don't have this life, even if they just prophesy or cast out demons and, and uh, do many wonders, they might not have eternal life. Uh, but if we just, we truly sorry for our sins and we obey God, we obey Him and we obey the Bible, we love God, we trust in Jesus as our Savior, we know for sure we're saved. These are the fruit of salvation. It will bear this fruit. We naturally want to obey God. The two necessary fruit here are doing God's will, obeying God and having a personal relationship with Jesus. So from these verses we can two, see two necessary fruit. First, doing God's will. So up here it says, uh, He who does the will of my Father in heaven. So obeying God's will. Another thing is, Jesus said, I never knew you. So there was no personal relationship with Jesus. So another thing that we obey God is having a personal relationship with God. So from this verse we see that these people don't know Jesus. They don't have a living relationship with Jesus. Then they are not saved. And when people are saved, they know Jesus, and Jesus knows them, that they have a relationship with Jesus. So these are the two necessary foot here, that they will obey God's will, and also have a close relationship, personal relationship with Jesus, knowing Jesus, and being known by Jesus, that Jesus knows him, and he knows Jesus. If someone does not obey God, even when he does ministry, he cannot have salvation. So if he doesn't obey God, he can have salvation. So number five, obey God. Okay, number six, serve God. So we need to tell people, everyone need to serve God. We're not saved by serving God, but when we are saved, we will serve God. Matthew 25, 20, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, so this is Matthew 25. In Matthew 25, there are three parables about the end time. The first parable was about the ten virgins. And the second parable is this parable here, the, about the talents. One received five talents, one received two, and one received one. And then the one who received five talents and two talents, they earned five talents and two talents more and then 
So they say to the Lord, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents beside them. The Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. So you, well done, you are good and faithful. Two things, good. That means a good personal, uh, personal quality. That he has love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness. So he has this good nature. It's not just obeying God. Is he is um, he has a good nature, like Jesus, to learn from Jesus. And faithful, that he is faithful, that he is faithful to obey God. He is uh, to, uh, to serve God. So he is good servant in his heart, in his life, and he is faithful to to serve God. You were faithful over a few things. Now, why a few things? Because you know we all don't serve God all day long. Now, how you say how can I serve God all day long? Actually, if we praise God and love God and glorify God all day long, we can at least uh, be faithful over more things. So all day long. All day long we say, Lord, you're so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we want to glorify God. If we do that whole day long, all day long, then we are, then we are faithful uh, in more things. Uh, and then I will make you ruler over many things. So in heaven, there is also management that God will give the faithful servants management in heaven. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So in heaven is full of joy that we can enjoy His joy, uh, His joy in heaven. The two necessary fruits here are being good, so good life qualities, and being faithful, faithful to do what God told us to do. So having goodness, kindness, love, joy, peace, and then faithful to obey God. When we pray and love God more, we will faithful be faithful over more things. We will pray more and love God more. We will obey. Uh, will be faithful over more things and one prominent prominent quality of God is joy so g come and enjoy the joy of mine so in heaven is joy so this servant is a good and faithful servant but there is another servant who who uh, bury the talent Matthew 25 27 so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Now this person did not use it and he just buried it. And the Lord said to him, you can at least deposit my money with the banker. So this should mean uh, offering. Now offering, we should do it with a joyful heart. It's not just, okay, I just give some money. But with a joyful heart and a thankful heart, Lord, you have blessed me in so many ways. You are full of love. You love me so much. I want to give this offering to you out of love. And when people are faithful to give, God is faithful to bless us. In Malachi chapter 3, He promises that when we give faithfully, tithe faithfully, and bring all the offerings to God faithfully, He will open the window of heaven and pour out His blessing upon us, even that is too full for us to hold so many blessings. So I hope that we all believe in that. Now many Christians, they say, I'm too poor, I cannot do offering. The less they do offering, the less faithful they are in offering, the less they will receive. And that's why many countries, they have poverty. But if we are faithful to God, God will, because He is faithful, He said He will bless us. He must bless us. If not, in heaven, God will say, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to bless you. Even though you offer to me faithfully, you tithe and give offering to me, but I forgot about you and I did not bless you. Now, if God did not do that, He has to apologize to us. But God does not have to apologize. He does everything right. He always follows His promises. So we can say to the Lord, You promised that. You for sure do it. So I can offer to you faithfully. And God will bless you. So this is what God has promised us. So you ought to deposit the money with the bankers and my coming I would have received back my own with interest so this servant cast an unprofitable servant so he's called an unprofitable servant into the outer darkness and he also called a wicked and uh, faithless servant and lazy servant the wicked and lazy servant 
cast his unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, in the future, there, is only, there are only two places, heaven or hell. This cannot be heaven. The outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth, this has to be hell. Now, some people said there is a third place. There's heaven and hell, and there's a place of gnashing of teeth. There's no such place. The Bible doesn't talk about such a place. There's only heaven and hell. So this is hell. So people who say they believe in Jesus, but they don't bear fruit. Now, we're not saved by doing good. We're not saved by serving God. But any real Christian will serve God. They will glorify God. They will say, God is so wonderful. They will tell people, God is so wonderful. God has blessed me like this. And God can bless you too. You won't. Uh, he wants to bless you. You follow God, He will bless your life. He will do wonderful things in your life. He will change your life and He will give you eternal life. So when Christians have this spiritual life, they naturally want to glorify God. They, they will say many times, Thank God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful. So the servant who does not use the one talent from God is cast into outer darkness with whipping and gnashing of teeth. This is hell in the future. There are only two places, heaven or hell. People who don't use the gifts and resources from God are people who don't serve God and they will go to hell. So if people don't use the talents from God, we don't serve God, they're not the faithful servant, they go to hell. If they have zero uh, service for God, uh, some people say, okay, I do a little bit. When we think about it, God will reward us richly. Whatever you do, even a cup of coal of God will bless you richly. So we should all be faithful to serve God. And when the church is full of people who are faithful to serve God, always glorify God, people will be attracted. When they see newcomers, they will always uh, tell them about Jesus and, and uh, care about them and help them. God is very happy and the church will attract more and more people. He will talk to his neighbors about the goodness of God. So new Christian, a real Christian will bear fruit like that. And if a Christian doesn't bear fruit at all. His whole life just is full of anger, frustration. He's yelled at people. He doesn't change. His life doesn't show Jesus. There is something wrong. He's not born again. And when a person is not born again, he doesn't have eternal life. So I hope uh, that we'll teach this teaching. But at the same time, we must tell people, we're not saved by doing good. We're not saved by doing good. And the motivation to serve God is not saying, oh, I, I, I'm afraid to go to hell. But to say, God is so good. Always look at the goodness of God. God is so good. I want to obey God. I want to serve God. I want to tell people about Jesus. I want to be filled with the joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. Then would we'll change people. So I hope we are motivated by the grace of God. Now at the same time, we are reminded, we, if we don't serve God, we have to give accounts. If a person doesn't serve God at all, he could face eternal damnation. So we tell people that. But the, for a healthy Christian, the motivation should not be fear. should not be saying, if I don't serve God, I'll go to hell. It should not be motivation like that. He should be motivated by the love of God. God loves me so much, I want to glorify God. I want to love God. I want to love people. It's my natural uh, desire. I want to really help people. This is a natural fruit of salvation. Okay, and then Matthew 25, 34. Then there's this uh, parable of the sheep and the goats. Then the king will say those on his right hand side, the right hand, that's the sheep. Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. So here, the king will say to those on the right hand side, uh, the sheep, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of God that is prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And uh, so you come and inherit the kingdom. And the king will, so they will say, you know, what did I do? Uh, because Jesus said, you have done this to me, done all this thing to me. And then the, they, they say, where did I, when did I did this to you? And then the king will answer to him, uh, surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. So when we do it to any, Jesus' brethren would be Christians. Now even when we give cup of cold water, in Mark 9.41 it says that, If anyone, because you belong to the Lord, to give a 
cup of water to you, by no means you lose its reward. So it, it says, explain that it's giving a cup of water to Christians. Now, we can also give to non-Christians and tell them about Jesus. Tell them why we give them a cup of cold water, because we love Jesus. That's also good work. But we, it's not just giving water to everyone in the world, but we give water to people and tell them about Jesus. And do it especially to Christians, to help the Christians. So I did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, to the Jesus brothers. Then you did it to me. So doing good works to Jesus' brethren is the necessary fruit of real Christians. Serving God is the necessary fruit of salvation. That we serve God, we bless Jesus' uh, brothers, that's Christians. And serving God can start with doing good things to Christians. The kingdom here is not the millennial kingdom. Now some people always talk about, oh, Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. And they say this is the millennial kingdom. When you look at uh, Jesus, uh, the parable, uh, the gospels and uh, the epistles of Paul and the other apostles, you don't find them talking about the kingdom of God being uh, the millennial kingdom, the millennium. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, the parable of the kingdom of God. He sows the seed. And then those who receive it with a good soil have barefoot 100 times, 60 times, 30 times. So this is the kingdom of God. is people who receive the word of God. And then the wheat and the tares. So at the end time, the wheat and the tares will be gathered. The wheat will be you know, put in the storeroom and the tares will be burnt. So this is a judgment at the end and then have eternal life. And then Matthew 25, also the kingdom of God. It's about obeying God, serving God, using our talents. So when we look at the kingdom of God, it's explained by Jesus and the apostle. It's about peace, joy, love, patience, kindness. This, are the king, this is the nature of the kingdom of God. So, so here it's not talking about the millennial kingdom. Okay, number four. Verse 25, 41. So these are the servant who does not do good to the Jesus brothers. Then he will say to those on the left hand, so that the goats, depart from me, you curse it. Into the everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels. So, um, so depart from me, you curse it. To enter the everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. So uh, they will go into hell if they don't do it to the to Jesus brothers. Then he'll, and this is very clear, everlasting <coughs> fire, <coughs> prepare for the devil and his angels. <coughs> so hell was not prepared for people, it's prepared for the devil and, and the demons. Then he will answer them saying, As surely I tell you, you did not, as surely as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So those who don't serve God, don't do it to little ones of Jesus, will go into everlasting punishment. And those who did it to Jesus' brothers will inter inherit eternal life. So those who have not done good to Jesus' brothers, they will be thrown in the fire. So blessing Christians and serving God are necessary fruits of salvation. So it tells us that every Christian should serve God. But we don't force people to serve. We say, it's more important to talk about the life of God. Be filled with the life of God. Love God all the time. Call, uh, praise Him all the time. And read the Bible all the time. The presence of God and the Word of God will bear fruit. And then we will uh, naturally want to serve God. So the fruit of salvation should come from the relationship with God. It's not just forcing people to do. It's not just yelling at people to do it. Then it's using the law to push people. But using the grace of God. God loves us so much. And God is so wonderful. When we praise Him all the time, He is very happy and He will bless us. And He will use our life. And if Christians don't have this life, then they don't bear fruit 
And if they have zero fruit, they have zero change, then they are not born again and they don't have eternal life. Okay, now so we uh, review that again. So this is the end of today's session. This sixth fruit, I hope you all remember this. First, the sixth fruits, I hope you memorize it. First, related to salvation. So continue to repent of our sin and turn away from sins. And then number two, continue to trust in Jesus as Savior and Master. So these are two things we do when we are saved. So we continue to do this. And then related to relationship with God. We have a close relationship with God. That means praying to God, reading the Bible, and responding to God when He moves in our heart, responding to the move of the Holy Spirit, and love God with all our heart. And then related to good works, we obey God, especially the Great Commission, to preach the gospel and teach people to obey everything Jesus has taught us and serve God. So every Christian are to serve God. If a Christian doesn't serve God at all, there's something wrong with his spiritual life. But serving God doesn't necessarily mean serving God in church. It can be anywhere. But naturally, people want to serve God in church also. So I hope you memorize this and remember that we need to bear fruit like this. We are not saved by good works. Very important to tell people we're not saved by these good works. But when we are saved, the Holy Spirit is in us. We are born again. Then we'll bear fruit. And I hope you memorize this to repent of our sin and turn away from sin, to uh, trust in Jesus as our Savior, to have a close relationship with Him and to love God and to obey God and to serve God. So I hope we all remember this and apply it to our life and teach the people to apply it to their life. Okay, let's close with the prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you love us so very much. And wherever you are, wherever you are, when we trust in you as a Savior, you, you give us a new life. You, uh, you uh, bring a new life to us. Then we are born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are living God. And when we have a close relationship with God, you will change our life and you give change to us. Lord, help us to realize that these changes are necessary. They are necessary in the sense that they are necessary fruit of salvation. When we are saved, we will have these fruits. They are necessary also. They are necessary sign of salvation. If a person doesn't have these fruits, it means that there is something wrong with the spiritual life. Lord, help us to continue to repent of our sins. Help us to continue to trust in Jesus as our Savior. And help us to have a close relationship by praying to you and reading the Bible and responding to your, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And also to love God with all our heart. And then to obey you and serve you. Lord, help us to bear this fruit so that we are sure about our salvation. We're sure about our salvation when we trust in Jesus. But also when we bear fruit, we see the fruit of salvation. We see the fruit of salvation coming from us. Lord, thank you, Lord. We're not saved by good works, but we're saved by grace through faith. But when we are saved by grace through faith, our good works will show and our good works will prove that we are born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. So I hope you remember that these are the signs of being born again. Now, if someone says, I'm not sure if I'm born again, so you can ask him, do you feel sorry for your sins? Do you continue to trust in Jesus as your Savior? Do you want Jesus to trust in you as your Savior? Now, if they have these two signs, they are already born again. And then we can continue to ask, do you have a close relationship with him? Do you pray to him? Do you respond to the Holy Spirit? Now, if they don't, you say, okay, repent and do that now, starting now. And then, uh, to love God, do you love God? Do you honor God? Do you like God? Appreciate God? And then, do you obey Him when He tells you? Some people say, I obey Him in some ways, but not in other ways. But then, we want to obey Him more, because when we sin, it will, it will uh, bring problems to our life. And then, the last will be to serve God. We want to glorify God. So, I hope you all are motivated to bear these fruits, and also teach the people to do that so that we are all showing the signs of salvation, bearing the fruit of salvation. It's not by these works that we're saved, but when we are saved, we'll for sure bear this fruit. So you notice I repeat this many times because I want people to be very sure that they're not saved by doing good. They're saved by grace through faith, but when they're saved, they will bear this fruit. Okay, God bless you. If you have a question, please send me WhatsApp. Now, only WhatsApp I will read for sure. If you send it to the messenger, sometimes I don't see it. So send, uh, uh, or Facebook, some people just send a Facebook comment. I don't necessarily read that. Send WhatsApp. Okay, God bless you.